Sisters. So today I'm dedicating this episode to the most amazing woman in the universe, my mom. And today's a very special day because we're celebrating the amazing, persevering, and fearless women we call our mothers. So in honor of Mother's Day, I'm going to be talking about women on money. And that's, to be more precise, women on paper, currency, or bill notes. Our first stop is going to Down Under. And Australia does a great job as it features a man and a woman on either side of the note showing gender equality. So the leading ladies who made their mark in Australia were Dame Mary Gilmore, who's on the 10 pound note. And she was an Australian writer, social reformer, poet, and journalist. And her image appears on the bill as well as an illustration inspired by one of her poems, No Foe Shall Gather Our Harvest. Mary Ryby is on the 20 pound note. And Ryby was a role model of success and took on her husband's business after his death. And then she became a legendary businesswoman. So there are at least three novels and a couple of children's books written in the honor of her, which is really cool. Edith Cowan is on the 50 pound note. And Edith was the first Australian woman to serve on member of the parliament. And she worked on women's and children's rights. And in addition to being on the note, she's also featured on Australian stamps and even has a university named after her. Dame Nellie Melba is on the 100 pound note. She was an opera soprano and she was in the first, she was like the first Australian to receive international recognition for classical music. She said the first rule in opera is a first rule in life. See everything yourself. So I had a little trouble deciphering what she meant, but I think it now I think it means that we all must take ownership and be authentic towards ourselves and like take pride in what we're doing and I definitely agree with that. That was that's very very inspiring in this this day and age. And I mean props to these fantastic Australian women. There has been some backlash however because they only feature white women. But still, Australia is the leader in having women on money. So neighboring Australia is, of course, New Zealand, where the $10 note, um, they where on the $10 note, they commemorate Kate Shepard. She advocated for women's rights to vote and is the country's most famous suffragette. Because of her strong and outstanding work, New Zealand was the first country in the world to grant universal suffrage. I mean, that's amazing kate shepard just did something crazy amazing awesome so one thing i found really interesting about kate shepard is that in a time when women were supposed to be very you know ladylike and wear corsets she reformed the way women dressed and she abolished um corsets and clothing that was really constricting and because of this women were then able to pursue physical activities like biking which is amazing Next up, we're going to go all the way to Europe and go to Sweden. And they also do a very good job representing women. So Astrid Lindgren, I love that name so much. I don't know why. But so she's the author of many books, but she's most famous for the beloved Pippi Longstocking books, which are translated in over 70 languages. Um, And she's featured on the 20 kroner, which is Sweden's form of currency. One of my favorite Pippi Longstocking quotes is, this let me tell you it's dangerous to keep quiet for too long your tongue shrivels up if you don't use it pippi's telling us that we must all use our voices and opinions and we all need to speak out and we must not stand in a corner being silent and waiting for the world to change we all need to come out and say what needs to be said so the only actress on this list is the acclaimed Greta Garbo, who's on the 100 kroner. She's known for like her amazing Hollywood career, but she started her career playing many Swedish roles. So I haven't watched any of her films, but I do know that Greta is known for her enigmatic and like mysterious characteristics, both off and on screen. Also, something I found interesting about her is Garbo found out that on one of the sets of her movies, her male co-star was paid um, $9,600 more than her a week. And she went on strike because of this. And she had to stand up to really big media corporations. And she ended up becoming one of the highest paying actors of all time. So that's crazy. And 
As you may already know, the women's gender pay gap is one of the motivations for me to start this podcast. So way to go, Greta Garbo. That rhymed, I'm sorry. So, opera singers are definitely shooting highs. I personally don't really like opera, but they're doing amazing. So Bridget Nielsen um, was the famous Swedish opera singer on the 500 kroner. And she was launched onto the world stage in the 1950s. And she has such a powerful voice that's really, like, clear. And she has a lot of, like, stamina in the high registers. So her talent um, really did help her tackle really difficult dramatic roles in opera. So that's very amazing. So now we're going to go head all the way to Mexico, where there are two amazing women. So Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz is on the 20. 20- 200 peso and she was a writer philosopher composer and this was during the baroque era she had very outspoken opinions and these granted her nicknames such as the 10th muse and the phoenix of mexico those nicknames are so amazing oh my god and then there was frida Kahlo. i'm pretty sure a lot of you know her i personally really do like her artwork because it's really colorful whimsical um just very wild And she's on the 500 peso note, and she shares this with her husband, who's also an artist, Diego Rivera. So Kahlo's self-portrait is on one side, and it's beside a miniature work of her, uh, art. Um, The art is called Love's Embrace of the Universe, Earth, Mexico, I, Diego, and Mr. Xolotl. Oh my god, I hope I didn't butcher that up. But... Anyways, Frida is a woman who had to overcome so much pain in her life. And she contracted polio when she was a child. And even though she recovered, she had was she was left with a limp. And later on as a teenager, she was in a bus accident and was unable to wa- and she was like unable to walk for 3 months. And because of this accident, Frida suffered from lifelong medical issues. But during her recovery, she discovered her love for painting and began working on her famous portraits. Frida is amazing because she was able to convert all this pain and suffering into something so beautiful and enriching. So props to her. Um, so now a little south of Mexico, Eva Perón, was, um, who was the first lady, former first lady of Argentina, is on the 100 peso note. Eva or Evita, as she's known in Argentina, used her position as the first lady not to stand silent beha- beside her husband, but rather to fight for causes she believed in, such as women's suffrage and improving the lives of the poor. Her influence in Argentinian politics and culture was so powerful, and Andrew Lloyd Webber, um, he even wrote a play about her called Evita, and... That's the music from the musical in the background. So all the way over in the Philippines, Corazon C. Aquino is on the 500 peso note, and she was the first female president of the Philippines. Aquino was also one of the main leaders in the People Power Revolution, which campaigned by peacefully resisting alleged electoral fraud and regime violence in the Philippines. I think it's really important that Corazon C. Aquino, she led this group that they... That they resisted this injustice through civil resistance as opposed to bloodshed which is which is really important to note finally we're traveling to england and the incredible monarch who needs no introduction has appeared on banknotes in every continent besides antarctica and like who even lives in antarctica anyways since Queen Elizabeth II took the throne in 1952 the queen has redefined what it means to be a monarch She's really stuck to her roots and her principles and proved to be a very steadfast ruler. While there was so much change around her family and the world and in her country. I recently finished watching The Crown and I really, really recommend you to watch it. It was so good. Um, and I think, you know, the costumes, the sets, every character is very well um, portrayed and they're all, it's all so amazing, but I do think that they definitely um, portrayed Queen Elizabeth in a way that the outside world hasn't seen yet or hasn't thought of yet. Um, you can see that she's very reliable, dependable around all this drama, but she's also vulnerable like any person in this world 
because you know she's a symbol in the united kingdom and and all in the commonwealth um but she is a vulnerable character and i think it's interesting to see you know the complexity of her as a person so i definitely think you should watch it and also you might not know this but recently in 2017 Jane Austen um, was uh, was put on the ten pound banknote, and she's the only other woman on pound on a pound other than the queen herself. So it includes an image of Jane Austen and Elizabeth Bennet. Jane Austen, sh- her thought and deliberation with all her characters just prove how strong and amazing a woman she was. Um, and Elizabeth Bennet is the protagonist of Pride and Prejudice who in my opinion is probably the greatest literary character ever. I just love her wit, her intellect and charisma. And so also on the banknote, there's this quote. um, And it's, I declare after all, there is no enjoyment like reading. I definitely agree with that quote. But what really confuses me about this quote is that it wasn't said by Elizabeth or any of the beloved characters Jane Austen created, but rather an obnoxious and vain minor antagonist of Pride and Prejudice, Caroline Bingley, who doesn't even like to read anyways. So she was just trying to impress Mr. Darcy, which I'm sure all of us would if we ever met him. I honestly, both me and my mom love Mr. Darcy so much. And actually, I'm so very much grateful to Jane Austen for helping my mom um, because because we've bonded through for helping me and my mom like bond through like so many um, books and all of the ad- adaptation, the movie adaptations. Um, we love all the characters and it's just I don't know, her writing just brings me and I know she brings my mom a lot of joy. And I think the same can be said for a lot of mothers and their children around the world who have also formed another connection through the amazing work of Jane Austen. So now our travels around the Mother Earth has unfortunately ended, but to some of you it may seem short and like abrupt. There are 195 countries on this earth, but not all of them feature women on their money. A big elephant in the room is the fact that the U.S., a country supposedly striving for gender equality in all aspects of society doesn't have a woman featured on the bill. This fact is quite frankly extremely disturbing. There are thousands of amazing, powerful, and influential women in the U.S. who deserve to be on money because money is a core part of our society and equal representation of gender on money is a must. Recently, like in the past couple years, there was a campaign called women on 20s and it was started to have a woman on the $20 bill by 2020 which is the centennial of the 19th amendment which gave women the right to vote out of all the potential candidates harriet tubman who was the american abolitionist and political activist who guided her fellow slaves to freedom through the underground railroad was voted to be on the bill But in 2019, the Treasury Secretary said that the design process had been delayed and Tubman would not appear on the $20 bill until at least 2028. I I honestly just feel really appalled to think that this progressive country, which has a pantheon of amazing women and considers that only white men deserve to be on money. So um, the link to Women on 20s is in my show notes. And I definitely suggest you go check it out and donate if you can and just really support this cause because it's really important. So I guess that's it for today. And to end on a brighter note, I'm going to quote Maya Angelou, who is the author, poet, and civil rights activist. She says, To describe my mother would be to write about a hurricane in its perfect power or the climbing, falling colors of a rainbow. Well said. I, I hope you guys all have a great Mother's Day um, and have a lovely, lovely day. And I can't wait to talk to you guys next time. Thanks. Thanks.